Uh, I know our correspondent uh, in Kiev, Alexei Yaroshevsky, is ready to join us right now. Alexei, uh, what's the latest there? What can you tell us now? Well, uh, things are a little calmer, a little calmer, at least in terms of the noise produced than uh, literally 10 minutes ago. But this reminds of a tug of war situation. Uh, we saw uh, less than an hour ago the first, uh, basically it was the second attempt uh, during this day that the police tried to push the rioters off the governmental uh, quarter here in central Kiev. Uh, they pushed them off to basically where I'm standing right now, literally five meters underneath uh, the position, my vantage point where I'm standing right now, set up a barricade, then the rioters came back again, charging at the police and pushed them off the square. Then in 10 minutes, 10 minutes later, the police made another charge at the rioters and again pushed them back. And as you can see, the situation has returned again to this stalemate. It is very, uh, very violent here. We've seen scuffles, we've seen uh, lots of rocks, Molotov cocktails, different type of projectiles, um, different type of steel bars and clubs thrown at the police. The protesters rushing, charging and attacking the policemen. Uh, there was not much violence coming from the side of the of the right police here, yeah, but definitely the situation has been a uh, very very tense so far. We see uh, we can also hear flashbangs exploding from time to time, and uh, it's really hard to say where this is all going to go because uh, today marks a special occasion for Ukraine. It's like Unity Day, and the opposition called on hundreds of thousands to take to the streets for a march and. Provided these circumstances we're seeing over here right now, it's hard to say how this march may end up. So we are in a hotbed of tension, which looks like a war zone here in central, in central Kiev. Absolutely. So Alexei Yashevsky there calling uh, Kiev now a war zone, as you heard, I hope so. Uh, if uh, all this goes on, what could this lead to ultimately? What do you think? Well... Klitschko has uh, mentioned the possibility of civil war if uh, the government doesn't meet his demands, the democratically elected government of the Ukraine, and dissolve itself. Um, and certainly from our cameras right now, we, we, we can see a lot of violence, uh, we can see fires, things uh, look horrific. And in an extremely small downtown section of Kiev, they are. But we should, I think, keep this in perspective. Um, these mass, this protests, it can't even really be described as a mass protest, but a, a relatively small riot of a few thousand at this point, is confined to one small downtown uh, street and uh, another street uh, of Kiev. We haven't seen significant protests uh, uh, of anywhere of, uh, near this uh, large or violent a scale uh, in the rest of the Ukraine. Um, I think at this point the uh, talk of civil war is, uh, as far as uh, the, all the indications at this point, is a little bit overblown. But again, we can only uh, hope and pray uh, that things don't get worse. Mm, I see, but of course, uh, not just a small group of people, but large, massive groups of people in Ukraine are not happy uh, about their country's economy. Uh, how do you think these protests uh, can undermine uh, the country's economy there? Yeah, well, the, nothing would have undermined the country's economy more than the uh, neoliberal shock therapy uh, economic suicide pack that was the EU association agreement and the deep uh, and comprehensive free trade sure. agreement with the IMF conditionality uh, that the opposition, uh, at least the, uh, the original public opposition leaders, wanted uh, the Ukraine to sign. The Ukraine economy is in a bad state, and these protests will, of course, uh, only make it worse. But the country is now getting uh, this uh, 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 repeated uh, payments of, of funds and support uh, from Russia. Uh, the, uh, uh, all indications are that the uh, uh, trade, the free trade area between Russia and the Ukraine is once again going at full speed. And even uh, the stock market, the international stock market, uh, the numbers for the Ukraine picked up uh, as soon as uh, the deal with Russia was signed. So I don't think there's any immediate danger of economic collapse. I think there's a more uh, a, a danger of this identity battle that is being played out in the Ukraine. Um, and I, I think one of the, the most important things we should consider uh, is that we see that this violence comes from a few thousand ultranationalists, and there's always tried to make a distinction between them and the peaceful protesters on the Maidan. But uh, we should note that the, the, the peaceful protesters there 
um, have been cheerleading and supporting on these ultra-nationalists. Mm -hmm. They are uh, calling out to them, good boys, death to the enemies. Exactly. They are literally cheerleading exactly. them on. And when the opposition leaders such as Klitschko make rhetorical statements about not supporting the violence, despite continuing to occupy the government buildings that these people have seized uh, and never denouncing them, um, uh, we've seen that... Uh, the vast majority of the protesters have lost faith with these moderate opposition leaders. They want to see action. They want to see blood on the streets of the Ukraine if they don't get their demands. Uh, so this supposed line between the ultra-nationalists and the peaceful protesters out there is uh, a little grayer than it should appear at first. Uh, protesters want to form their uh, own parliament. Uh, is it going to have legitimacy in the eyes of their Western supporters? Well, the U.S. and the E.U. have kind of a history of recognizing uh, undemocratically elected uh, uh, parliaments of um, insurgent uh, and opposition groups uh, that share their uh, foreign policy interests. Uh, we've seen it in Libya. We've seen it in Syria. We, we, we've seen at least rhetorical support for the completely and utterly uh, failed uh, parliament of, protest of liberal protesters in Russia. Um, however, I think that with the violence that we're seeing, uh, I don't uh, think that the U.S. and the EU will go so far as to legitimize this parliament at this point. Um, I, I, have, I, I actually have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, we were, we were, already we're, we're hearing about sanctions from, or possible sanctions from the United States towards Ukraine. Mm -hmm. What would happen, what would happen if, uh, for example, several Several police were set on fire in the United States by the protesters. What would be the reaction by the state? Okay. Well, it, it, we have seen exactly uh, that in the Ukraine. Oh. There have been uh, pictures uh, widely circulated uh, in the Russian and Ukrainian press, oh. although we haven't seen much of I'm them. I'm sorry, I think we have to interrupt you because mm -hmm. I think we have our correspondent uh, mm -hmm. who is in Kiev, Peter Oliver. I think we can... Um, him right uh, well, actually, Peter Oliver is working in Kiev right now, and we can uh, go live. Uh, Peter, what's going on? What's going on where you are right now? Well, over the, the last hour or so, we've seen a very large influx of people, both here to, to Maidan Square and over to uh, where the, the Dinama Stadium is, where we saw barricades being set up and, a, and an ongoing standoff between police and protesters. So huge numbers have arrived here and over there and the street in between. That's a whole sea of people right now. now uh, police have tried to clear those um, those barricades in front of the Dinamo Stadium. We saw uh, several charges by riot police into uh, into the rioters. There, they were uh, well, really, they were some of the the ugliest scenes I've I've ever witnessed anywhere anywhere in the world. Um, I, I say there are a lot of demonstrators. One of them just uh, coming into shot there. Um, yeah, see, we, after these these clashes between police and rioters, we uh, we saw several police, several rioters on the floor afterwards. So people are being being hurt in this. Um, but when the police moved in, it was a huge sea of people uh, stampeding away. We were in amongst all of that and were able to um, to to dart into a, a hotel um, and, and take 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 shelter there as the police cleaned that out. But the thing what's happening at the moment is as soon as the police clear these uh, these rioters out. The rioters wait about five minutes and then they're throwing rocks and, and uh, burning tires as the latest that we've seen being thrown as they try to retake those barricades that they've been, they've been cleared off. So there's a lot of people arriving here. It is a public holiday in Ukraine um, and that's certainly reflected in the numbers that we're seeing. But um, we're also seeing many, many groups turning up uh, masked uh, in helmets, uh, carrying rudimentary weapons, looking something more like out of a, um, a, a medieval movie than than uh, modern day uh, Ukraine uh, homemade homemade weaponry and they, these people are um, they have been receiving orders we've been hearing them about how they're going to organize their attacks against the police so uh, these attacks aren't going anywhere anytime soon and we'll, we'll be bringing you all of the the latest as it unfolds here in Kiev all right Peter Oliver reporting there live from Kiev um, Peter thank you very much and please do keep us up to date